Maryland softball is entering the deciding part of its regular season, hoping they fall on the right side of the NCAA tournament bubble. We'll take a look at how the Terps got to this point, coming up on this edition of The Left Bench in Focus. We needed to come through. Just got to do a little bit more. Welcome in everybody to another edition of the Left Bench in Focus, presented by Terrapin Sports Central. I'm Ben Wolf, here alongside Sam Jane, and it's time to go all in on Maryland softball. And boy, do we have a lot to get to. Yeah, with 46 games in the book and just seven regular season contests left, the Terps are rounding third on the 2023 campaign. And we were supposed to be talking about Maryland's matchup with Coppin State today, but that didn't really take place. For more on what happened Wednesday morning, we're joined now by Kurt Masline, who's coming to us from the Maryland Softball Stadium. Kurt, why was Wednesday night's game canceled? Yeah, guys, an unfortunate set of circumstances led to this diamond behind me staying dormant for a few more days. Head coach Mark Montgomery said that the combination of logistical concerns with Coppin State, combined with the risk of rain later in the day, led to the game being canceled. And that weather could also affect this weekend series against Wisconsin. But Ben and Sam, as of right now, that series is set to start on Friday. Yeah, Kurt, I mean, this is going to be a huge weekend series, so it's disappointing for Maryland that the game was canceled. But Ben, when we look at this weekend, that's when the games are really going to start to matter. You're right, Sam. Thanks, Kurt. Maryland was in action this past weekend when Penn State came to town, and each game came down to the wire. Courtney Weish was absolutely dealing from the circle early on, racking up K after K in game one. Maryland scored first on an Amelia Lex sack fly. Penn State would regain the lead, but a Trinity Schlotterbeck RBI left the game tied through seven innings. Penn State's Lexi Black hit a solo shot in extra innings and gave the Nittany Lions game one. Game two was another low scoring affair. The Nittany Lions got on the board first, but that would be all the scoring for Penn State. Jada McFarland tied it, and a Kylie Goff sack fly gave the Terps a one run lead. With no margin for error, Megan McConney made a stellar diving catch to keep the Terps up a run propelling Maryland to a 2-1 to one win. Game three was once again a pitcher's duel. Though Amelia Leck got Maryland going early with a solo shot in the third, Weish was sitting down batters early, but a two-run six inning gave the Nittany Lions a one-run lead from there, and the Terps could not find the equalizer, dropping the game and series 2-1. to one. Well, I mean, we needed to come through. We had several opportunities to score some more runs, and we didn't get it done. And that's unfortunate, but, but that's the way it goes sometimes. But that's all it is. This game was fairly evenly matched. Could have gone either way, and it went against us. Um. Penn State was not the only series this year where Maryland has faltered in close games. The Terps have lost seven games by three runs or less in conference play, including the two this past weekend. Close games have been a theme, but that's no indictment of the pitching staff. Leading the way for Maryland in conference play is star ace Courtney Weish. The senior has been dominant against Big Ten teams, only allowing 25 runs in just 11 appearances. Weiss has utilized her powerful fastball and rise ball at the top of the zone, pairing it with a devastating breaking ball. Coupled with Weish is fellow senior Trinity Schlaughterback, who hasn't been quite on Weish's level, but she's been pretty darn good herself. Schlaughterbeck sprouts a 2.19 ERA, and Ben, she tossed a perfect game back in February. Dominant pitching from the veterans allowed the Terps to steamroll their way through non-conference play, posting an eye-catching 24-5 record. The dynamic pitching tandem has also recorded seven total shutouts, along with their battery mate Amelia Leck, who lit it up at the dish. She's currently batting 333 and showed off her power by smashing two grand salamis. Maryland's two biggest wins this season were over then number 22 Oregon and then number three Oklahoma State in the Puerto Vallarta College Challenge. And that 24-5 non-conference record is quite unprecedented for this Maryland program. That's right, Ben. To go inside the numbers of the Terp season thus far, Eddie Calkins joins us now from Studio B. Eddie? Yeah, guys, it's certainly been a turnaround for this Maryland softball team under Mark Montgomery, and the numbers don't lie. Let's take a look. 
Back when Maryland was in the ACC, they were above 500 every year except for two since the program began in 1995. Since they joined the Big Ten in 2015, they've only reached that mark once, when they were exactly 500 in 2015. Then came Mark Montgomery in 2020. His first year was a shortened one when the Terps season ended after 23 games due to the COVID pandemic. But in 2021, all 44 games were conference opponents, and in both those years, the Terps had an average 477 winning percentage. But last year, Montgomery's squad finished above 500 for the first time since that 2013 season. Going back to the shortened 2020 season against all non-conference opponents, the Terps were outscored by an average of 2.3 runs per game. In 2021, they cut that deficit to only 0.25 runs per game. And last season, Maryland finally entered the positive side of those numbers. They outscored their opponents by 0.93 runs per game in non-conference games. Of course, that brings us to this year, where Maryland averages a 3.76 more runs per game than their opponents in out-of-conference games, a huge leap. In Big Ten play so far, they've given up 54 runs while scoring 54 themselves. A couple more key offensive numbers. The Terps lead, the, they're tied 25th in the country and second in the Big Ten in total and stolen bases. And they've walked 46 more times than their non-Big Ten opponents this year. For comparison, Montgomery's first year, they were outwalked by 35. So, the Terps are getting on base more often and scoring more runs per game across the board, especially against non-conference teams. When the Mac Maryland's back in the ACC, their record was around 500 in conference games, but they made up for that early in the season against non-conference opponents. Back to the good old days, I guess. And guys, the formula is simple for Maryland to make it to its first NCAA regional appearance since 2012. With two studs in the circle, as long as the Terps continue to beat the remaining inferior opponent and compete in Big Ten play, this team is set up to see action in late May. Yeah, and we'll be talking more about that later in the show. Great insight, Eddie. Thanks, Eddie. Well, we know this Maryland team is having one of the program's best seasons in a long time. And Ben, it might be thanks to some flurry, flurry and fluffy friends. The Terps have brought some stuffed animals into the dugout, with a rotating cast of characters making appearances after big plays. It's definitely a cute story that'll certainly garner more attention if Maryland makes it to the tournament. I mean, Ben, when you look at these animals, it's so cool to see how they bring them out. It's very unorthodox, but... I like how they've kind of incorporated into their celebrations. You're right. It is quite a different celebration, but hopefully it'll get the bats going. you got to think that it will. Now, don't go anywhere, because when we come back, we'll crown our midseason award winners and highlight our top five plays of the year so far. Plus, Kira Bruno will tell you more about one player's inside hustle. Stay with us. There are 16 million children struggling with hunger in America. That's one in five daughters, sons, neighbors, and classmates who don't know where their next meal is coming from. Yet billions of pounds of good food go to waste every year. It's time we do something about it. Feeding America is a nationwide network of food banks that helps provide meals to millions of kids and families in need. Visit feedingamerica.org to help them feed even more. Together, we can solve hunger. Together, we're Feeding America. Welcome back to the Left Bench In Focus, brought to you by Terrapin Sports Central. I'm Sam Jane, that's Ben Wolf, and Ben, this Maryland softball team is hanging right on the cusp of the NCAA tournament. It's make or break to down the stretch here for the Terps. You're right, Sam, and if we take a look at last year, seven Big Ten teams made the tournament. But with that, Maryland had the fifth best record, but didn't make it. If we take a look this year, they're currently ranked 10th, but have the fourth best overall record. Uh, and we'll see if those non-conference wins against Oregon and Oklahoma State will play in. Yeah, those carry such a big weight on the committee's you know, selection process. They currently rank 46 in the RPI, which is the committee's way of judging teams. And I think that those wins are going to be huge come you know, when it's time to select teams. But this weekend's series against Wisconsin is going to be so big. When I talked with Mark Montgomery, he said that whoever loses this series is really on the outside looking in. So if they're able to take two or three from the Badgers, that's going to be so big for their tournament resume. Yeah, Maryland's really going to have to find that second gear and get that series win this weekend to get that advantage. It's going to have to be the pitching, as we know. Courtney Weish and Shirley Soderbeck have been so good all year. Wisconsin struggles on the offensive end as well, so you've got to think that if they're able to take two or three with strong pitching, they're right, right there to make the tournament. So we got to look at that, and we'll have to see how it turns out. And no matter how the Terps perform on the diamond, pitcher Courtney Weish has earned herself a new title of entrepreneur. Okay, we'll Kira there. Bruno has more. Yeah. Courtney Weich is a pitcher for Maryland softball. But she's also an entrepreneur and coach. 
teaching them how to be strong young women on and off the field is something that now is truly my purpose and my passion. So that's ultimately why I started my business. Her pitching camp, Spin, Speed and Snap, is for young pitchers and catchers to get better at their game, but also... To understand that they can use their talents and their gifts on the field, but to ultimately take them anywhere they want to go in life. Weich's teammate Kylie Goff started out as the catching coach for the camp about a year ago. Already, she's banking experiences she says are priceless, such as one interaction with one of the girls she coaches. She got a picture. It was a picture of me and her, and she, like, wanted me to sign it or whatever, and I was like, oh, my God. When on the softball field, it's not just Weich and Goff having an impact on the girls they coach. Those girls have a lasting impact on them as well. Just, like, the little things that it brings and like especially with me like being away from home like just having that a little bit of warmness getting like just receiving that from somebody was like so sweet sharing moments like those is just a beginning as they hope to expand so other girls can learn from white and her teammates and grow not just as players but young women as well so seeing them grow literally in life not only as a pitcher on the field it's like oh you're now young you know you're becoming a little teenager and i'm like oh okay for terrapin sports central i'm kira bruno and sam it's great to see the significant impact that these players are making on the field and in the local dmv community that's right ben and like kira said weish has been incredible this year which put her in consideration for many of our mid-season awards but for team mvp we ended up going in a different direction Congrats to Jada McFarlane for being this year's midseason MVP. McFarlane was an all Big Ten first team selection last year, and she picked up right where she left off. She started in every game so far this season and leads the team in batting average, doubles, and total bases. Paired with her excellent approach at the plate, she's displayed some incredible range in the outfield. You'll see that in top five later. The junior has been so impressive all year, making her more than deserving of this year's award. With her outstanding play in the circle, there's no way we could crown anyone but Courtney Weish as our midseason Cy Young. Weish has been a force all season long, recording a 14-9 record with a 2.63 ERA. If you thought those stats were impressive, how about this one? Weish has tallied 154 strikeouts through 26 appearances. The senior strikeout total accounts for more than half of the team's strikeouts on the season. Weish has improved on locating her pitches, sequencing, and expanding her arsenal has been a crucial reason why she's been so dominant and why we've chosen her as our Cy Young. Yeah, Weish has been so good this year, Ben, and she's going to be big for Maryland down the stretch. But we've talked about two upperclassmen so far. How about we show a freshman some love? Picking up our midseason Gold Glove Award is freshman Sammy Woods. The California native has had no trouble adjusting to her new home shining especially in the field with a near perfect fielding percentage. Mark Montgomery said she had a chance to be the Cal Ripken of the program. Maryland fans will be happy to hear that. Woods in the fields is just so impressive and so smooth. All those awards are well deserving and each player has been critical in Maryland's resurgence this year. But Ben, now it's time for our favorite part of the show. It's time to list our top five plays of the season. Let's start with number five, a little throwback to earlier this year. It's Amelia Lex's grand slam against Oklahoma State. The Terps' first career home run for the sophomore came against the number three team in the country. Lex has had such a good sophomore season, and it's so cool to see her break out in a big time way. Next up, we got Megan McCommy with this outstanding diving catch from this past weekend. Here we got the slow-mo. Look at her covering all that ground and able to stretch out to make the diving catch to keep the Terps in the game. mccomey has been one of the best outfielders in the Big Ten, and that play shows exactly why. Then, at number three, we don't have just one play, but a whole stretch of them. That's Courtney Weish's three strikeouts, or three shutouts from this year. One of them came against Michigan State when she was absolutely dominant. We talked about it earlier, but Weish has been so good all year. Here at number two, we got freshman Sammy Woods where she slapped down the fake tag to deke out the runner going from second. If she didn't do that, the runner would have just kept going to get extra, more extra bases. And finally, at number one, we have our team MVP, Jada McFarland, showing off the range. We talked about it. She's got excellent speed. And here, she crashes up against the wall to make our number one play of the season. And that's going to do it for this edition of the Left Bench in Focus. TLB is back on Tuesday with Nathan Schwartz and Jonas Evans here behind the desk. 
We'll be back with you again next week to talk all things about Maryland lacrosse. In the meantime, be sure to keep up with all of Terrapin Sports Central's coverage on Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, and online at terrapinsportscentral.com. We'll see you next time.